Hello there, and welcome back to another video on the Future Programmer YouTube channel. To wrap up the third chapter of the Java Basics course, we will be making a fun rock, paper, scissors game using Java programming. So without further ado, let's get started. So here I have opened Sublime Text, which is my favorite code editor where I will be writing the rock, paper, scissors game before I move the program to the online Java editor to run it. So in our program, we first need to import the scanner class so we can get user inputs from the player. So let's do that. So import java.util.scanner and we also need to make a class since all Java programs need to be inside of a class. So pull a class main and I'm going to call this main because in Replit, we have to have a class called main. So inside this main class, we'll be writing several methods. The first one is going to be what we always had in our previous program. So the main method, public static void main string args. And inside of here will be our entry point to our program. So when we run the entire program, Java will come to the main method and run the code inside of here. We can call other methods inside of our main method and these methods will be run that way. So the first thing that we need to do in the main method is probably to print out a welcome message to our player. So welcome to the rock, paper, scissors game like this. So now let's think about the logic of our program. Who will this game be between, since we probably need more than one person to play a rock, paper, scissors game. So in this case, we'll be having two players. The first person is, or the first player is a human player. And the second player will be a computer. So in this case, we will be asking our player, our human player, what they want to choose, rock, paper, or scissors. As for the computer, we'll be randomly generating a choice, either rock, paper, or scissors. So we know we will not be making this an unfair game where the human cannot win. So we'll actually be generating a random choice for the computer. So we, let's write a method for each of these. So inside of the main class as well, let's write a method to ask the player for their choice. So method public static void, let's call this get player choice. No, it will not be taking any parameters. So no inputs. And what we'll be doing in here is let's make a scanner object first. So scanner sc is equal to new scanner system.in. And let's just print out enter rock paper or scissors. Let's also offer the choice to the user of exiting the program. So enter anything else to quit. And then let's use sc, which is the object we made up here. So sc.nextLine will be getting the input from the user. And let's store it inside of a string variable called input. So what we are doing here is we're asking the user to input rock, paper, scissors, or anything else. And let's check, is it rock, paper, or scissors, or is it anything else? If it's anything else, we want to return a message to where this method was called and tell the main method that the player no longer wants to play our rock, paper, scissors game. So it's a good time to exit the program. So what we can do is we can just use an if statement. If input dot equals to rock. So this is again how we compare one string to another in Java. So if input dot equals rock or input dot equals paper or input dot equals scissors, we will just return input. So if we got rock, paper, or scissors from the player, let's just return the input. So rock, paper, or scissors. Otherwise, if it's anything else, 
That means the player wants to quit the game. So what we can do is return some message like Q. So inside of the main method, we can call this program or this method, which by the way is currently incorrect. I just noticed that I forgot to change the return type to string since we'll be returning either rock, paper, scissors or Q. So why don't we call the get player choice method inside of our main method? So get player choice and let's store inside of a string variable player choice. If the player choice is equal to Q, so we know that the player doesn't want to play anymore, we can just print out goodbye, thank you for playing. Or I suppose we don't need that since maybe the player hasn't even started playing yet. So goodbye. And then we can do return. And the reason why we did return here is if we have some code like right here, when we run the return statement, none of these codes will be run since when we call the return statement, it is essentially exiting our method. So that is why we have the return statement on line nine. So we check, does the user want to play anymore? If the user doesn't want to play anymore, we return. Otherwise, we can continue on. So now we want to get the computer choice. And how can we do that? Well, let's also write a method for that. So we can uh, define a method called public static. We'll also be returning a string. So public static string get computer choice. And this is going to return to us rock, paper, or scissors. How can we do that? Well, right now we don't know how to actually get a random choice, rock, paper, or scissors. So what we can do instead is we can generate a random number, one, two, or three. So this will be randomly generated. If we got one, that means the computer chose rock. If we got two, that means that the computer chose paper. If we got three, that means scissors is the computer's choice. So what we can do here is, why don't we just make a number variable, an integer variable, num, which is equal to math.random times three plus one. So num will be equal to a random integer between one and three. So if we get one, we get rock. If we get two, we get paper. If we get three, we get scissors. So we can use a switch case statement to determine which of these we got from our number. So switch case, so switch will be testing num against a few cases. If in the case of num being one, let's also make a variable here, so string choice, we don't need to initialize it since we'll be doing that inside of here. So choice will be equal to rock break. Case two choice will be equal to paper break. And lastly, so otherwise default choice will be equal to scissors. And we don't need to break this time. So there is that, and we can just simply return our choice variable from our method. So we return either rock, paper, or scissors. So why don't we see if this works inside of our main method? So get computer choice, we can just write here, get computer choice. And let's store inside of a variable string computer choice. And to test this out, we can just uh, let's just print out player player choice. And as for the computer, we can just print out computer computer choice. So let me run this program inside of let's let me just run it locally actually since it's a little bit less work than copying it into Replit. So let's just do Java rock paper scissors Java. Welcome to the rock, paper, scissors game. Enter rock, paper, or scissors. Enter anything else to quit. 
So let's first see if I enter anything else, will it actually quit? Let's just enter A. And we see goodbye. So we know the program works uh, when we quit the program. That's working well. Welcome to the Rock, Paper, Scissors game again. Let's just enter Rock this time. So this time, we entered Rock. That's good. And Computer entered Scissors. Let's see if the computer is capable of entering anything else other than Scissors. Let's try Paper this time. And we see the computer also entered Paper. And running it again, let's enter Paper again. I quite like to enter Paper today. So we see the computer entered Scissors again. Let's see if the computer is able to enter rock. Paper once again, we got scissors again. Let's try paper again, see if this time the computer entered rock. So we know that the computer is able to generate randomly rock, paper, or scissors. So now what we need to do is determine who won, since that's the whole point of the game is who won the game, right? So if the player got paper and the computer got rock, who won between the two players? That is what we need to handle next. So we can use another method, and this is the last method that we need today, don't worry. Let's just write another method down here called, it will be returning string, and let's just call it get winner. Unlike the previous two methods that we defined, this one will be taking two inputs. So the first input will be the player's choice. The second one will be the computer's choice. So every time we call get winner, we have to pass in two values. The first one being what the player has entered and the second one being what the computer has entered. And get winner will compare these two and determine who won. And instead of returning either player or computer, which is probably a little bit cleaner, honestly, but actually it will be simpler for us if we return either tied, lost, or won. So what we're going here, if we return these three values, we can just print out here, you, and then get winner, player choice, computer choice. So this will return tied, lost, or won. So the whole statement, the whole output will be you lost, you won, or you tied. I hope that makes sense. So how we're going to do that? This is will, this will be a little bit tedious to type out, but hopefully it won't be too bad. Let's simple our work. Let's, let's simplify our work by first checking is the player choice equal to the computer choice? Since if they are, then we know it's a tie. So if player choice dot equals computer choice, let's return tied. Don't forget a semicolon. And otherwise, so if this is not true, sorry, if this is not true, we will continue to test. So string result, this will be either lost or won. Since after we call this statement, if this is true, we run return tied, nothing below this point will be run. This will not be run if this is returned. So returning something from a method is saying, hey, we have a return value. We will be returning this to where the method was called, and that is it for this method call. We're done with this method call. So string result. Switch. We'll be testing, let's just do player choice. We can also do computer choice, but either way it would work. So case rock. And let's do case paper. And lastly, we will be needing a default case like this. So we're saying if player choice matches rock, what will we do? Well, we will be testing the computer's choice. So in the case that the player chose rock and computer choice is equal to paper, we know that the result will be equal to, so if the player got rock and computer chose paper, we know that the player lost, right? Since uh, paper 
would win against Rock. So we do this, and otherwise, result will be equal to 1. And the reason why we don't need to check for the computer choice, paper, rock, and scissors, is that because we handled this part up here, we can simplify our work down here. Since the case where the player got the same thing as computer, so in this case, the player got rock and the computer got rock, that has already been handled. So we just need to check when the player got rock, the computer got paper, this is one case, and the other is where the player got rock and the computer got scissors. So that's the that's a win for the player. And let's take a look at the case for paper. If computer choice is equal to rock, the result will be it's a one for the player. Otherwise, the result will be a lost for the player. Default, so otherwise, when the player got scissors, we want to also check computer choice is it equal to paper. If it is, result is equal to one. Otherwise, result is equal to lost. And I actually forgot something, or two things actually. So after uh, the if else statement in the two cases, we have to do break so as to not continue on. And after our switch statement, we can return the result. So return result. Let's see if this works. We already have the method call for get winner. Let's see if this works, or maybe there's an error somewhere. So let's just run it. Rock, paper, scissors. Welcome to the rock, paper, scissors game. I'll be entering rock. And we see that the player entered rock, the computer got paper, and therefore I lost. Let's run it again. This time I will be entering my favorite choice of paper. I got paper, computer got paper, we tied. That is good. Let's try it again. Paper again, and this time the computer entered scissors, and I therefore lost. That is all working. Let's just copy this code into the online Java editor from Replit to see if it works in an online editing environment, since many of you would probably be running this program online anyways. So let's just run this program. And let me enter rock. So the computer got scissors and I have won this game. Running it again, I can enter paper and computer entered scissors, I lost. Let me just enter scissors since I don't think I've done that previously. So scissors, player entered scissors, computer entered scissors, and we tied. So everything is working in our program. Here's a little bit of challenge for you. Right now, every time we want to play this game, we have to run our program again. So why don't we, or why don't you make the program so that it continuously runs our main method again and again and again, or the code inside of the main method. So some sort of loop would probably be necessary to continue playing our game as long as the player has not entered something else to exit the, uh, the, uh, to exit the game. And hopefully, in this short 79 line long program, you've learned a few things about using methods in Java programming. And that's it for this program walkthrough of this rock, paper, scissors game in Java. If you found this video helpful and learned something today, please consider subscribing to the Future Programmer YouTube channel down below. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in more videos of the Java Basics course.